Hi, and welcome to the Day Trading for Beginners podcast. I'm Tyler Stokes from stokestrades.com, and this is episode eight. And in this episode, we are talking about commodities. So we're going to talk about what commodities are and then briefly how they are traded. So I'm on a journey to become a full-time day trader, and we are in the beginning stages of that journey. So we're doing a full sort of background on the basics of the stock market. So in previous episodes, we talked about stocks, bonds, ETFs. Here, we're going to talk about commodities, and then we're going to talk about futures, options, the Forex market, uh, and then some stock exchanges and stock market indexes before we move on to some more actionable steps like setting up a brokerage account and all that sort of stuff. So if you want a rundown on what we're doing in the first six months, you can find a link to that in the show notes. So this is very much going to be a beginner friendly review of what commodities are. And when I sort of started this, I sort of knew what commodities were, but you know, I didn't have a full grasp on all of them, the categories, and then I didn't really know how they are traded. So if I want to be a day trader, certainly I want to refresh on this information because as a day trader, you can trade uh, commodity, commodities. You can do that with options and you can do that with futures trading, which we will be talking about in more depth in future episodes. But let's jump right into it and talk about commodities. So for all of these examples, I tend to like to use the AI tool from X called Grok because it helps give some examples of these financial terms and concepts uh, that are a little bit more, you know, easy to read, kind of fun um, and a bit entertaining rather than, you know, some dry material that you might find on some other uh, blog. So I have used X to help me with some of the definitions of these commodities and these commodity terms. So let's get right into it. So here's what Grok has told us what a commodity is. All right, buckle up for a wild ride through the fascinating world of commodities. These little rascals are the building blocks of the universe, the unsung heroes of the economy, and the secret sauce in your favorite products. Think of them as the Lego bricks of commerce, but instead of colorful plastic, they come in flavors like wheat, gold, oil, and even financial products. So you know how you can't live without your morning coffee? Well, imagine that coffee is a commodity, and it is a commodity. It's a basic raw material that's used to make the finished product, your cup of joe. Now let's say you're a coffee shop owner. You want to make sure you always have enough coffee beans to keep your customers caffeinated and happy. But coffee bean prices can change a lot, just like the stock market. One day, there might be a shortage of beans due to bad weather in the coffee growing region. And then the next day, a bumper crop. So that's a crop that's unusually large might flood the market, driving prices down. So as a savvy coffee shop owner, you might decide to trade in the coffee commodity market to hedge your bets. You could buy futures contracts to lock in a certain price for coffee beans, ensuring that you always have a steady supply at a predictable cost. So commodities aren't just limited to food though. They can also include materials like gold, oil, and even financial products like currencies and indexes. Now the key is that commodities are uniform and interchangeable, meaning that one barrel of oil is pretty much the same as another. So whether you're sipping on your morning coffee, filling up your car with gas, or investing in gold, commodities are all around you playing a vital role in our daily lives in the global economy. So let's take a closer look at some real uh, examples. We'll just go through four of them uh, here. So wheat. So imagine you are at a bakery and the baker pulls out a sack of wheat, but wait, it's not just any wheat, it's commodity wheat. So this means it meets the minimum standard for baking and can be used interchangeably with other sacks of wheat. What about gold? Picture a gold miner who discovers a shiny golden nugget. This nugget is a commodity, meaning it's uniform and meets the minimum standards for gold. It can be traded on an exchange and eventually it might end up in a beautiful piece of jewelry. Oil. Picture a mechanic working on a car. The oil he uses is a commodity, meaning it's interchangeable with other oils 
and meets the minimum standard of quality. Without this commodity, the car might not run smoothly. Financial products. Imagine you're a financial wizard who trades currencies and indexes on the stock market. So this is something that we might be doing. These financial products are commodities too. They're uniform and they meet the minimum standard for trading. So there you have it. That's a small journey through the world of commodities. And remember, these little guys are the backbone of the economy. And without them, we'd all be lost in a sea of chaos and confusion. So let's break down commodities into sort of the groups that they're sort of categorized in. When I was looking at this, you know, some people group them into groups of three, some people group them into groups of four. I don't think there's a proper way to do it, but here I'm going to run through uh, just some of the major ones. And then in the show notes, I'll have a link to this article that you can reference to get a more exhausted uh, list. And then we're going to briefly talk about trading commodities because in that example, I know that you're not a coffee store owner, and you're not going to actually buy these commodities. So when I was thinking commodities, you know, are these people actually buying the coffee, storing it somewhere uh, and then selling it? Or, you know, if you start trading gold, do you need to actually take ownership of the gold and store it? So there are two different ways to trade um, commodities. So there is a market where people actually buy these goods uh, and they store them. So that's a huge, huge market. And it's just made up of big players and big um, companies. But probably, you know, if you're listening to this now, you're probably like me where we're not going to actually buy and go through with any contract. So we're called sort of speculators. We just want to trade the commodities on exchanges or through other means uh, and just sort of uh, trade speculating the prices, but we're not going to actually ever buy the commodity, you know, get the sugar or get the coffee or get the soybeans or any metals actually sent to us and store them. So that's not the commodity trading that we're going to do, especially not as day traders. So there's two different sort of ways to think about it. There's that wholesale trading where people are actually buying the physical product and they trade like that. And that's sort of what the, com the commodity market was originally um, created as people have been trading commodities for you know years and years and years. But here now, with you know the way the markets work, we can speculate and we can um, you know use contracts that never get filled to uh, make money day trading commodities. So that's more of what we're going to talk about uh, in a future uh, episode. So let's go over how these commodities are grouped. So. Uh, sometimes they are grouped in three different ways. So energy, metals, which are kind of called hard commodities, and then agriculture, which is called soft. So energy commodities, this uh, category might include things like oil, um, gas, which are crucial for powering, you know, industries and households. And then you have metals. So these are hard commodities. These might be, you know, the non-precious metals like lead, copper, nickel, aluminum. Uh, these are used for manufacturing. So when I first thought of commodities, that's sort of where my brain goes to these, you know, copper, nickel, and the, that sort of thing. Uh, but then you've got precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Uh, these are also traded and they're known for their value uh, used in jewelry and other industrial uh, applications. So these are often referred to, again, as we mentioned, hard um, commodities. And then the soft ones, these encompass products like uh, sugar, coffee, soybeans. Uh, these are essential for food production uh, and have a significant impact on global uh, food prices. And again, in the article, uh, in the show notes, you can find a extensive list of, you know, the energy commodities, the metal commodities, the agricultural commodities. Then you've got livestock and meat commodities, dairy commodities, uh, and so on. So I will reference that uh, below uh, rather than discussing it here uh, on the podcast. So that is a good rundown of what commodities are. And then when we talk about trading, uh, you know, commodity trading, it is sort of like the global game of swapping stuff. It's all about buying and selling raw materials that are used to make things. So these materials are usually interchangeable with other types of the same material, like swapping one bushel of wheat uh, for another. But you and I 
uh, we're not going to be actually swapping one bushel of wheat uh, for another. You know, commodity trading, it used to be a big deal for just professionals, but now it's easier for regular folks like you and me to get in on the action. And again, we're not going to be swapping actual commodities. We're going to trade commodities in different ways using things like futures contracts. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Options, we'll be talking about options. And then what we have already spoken about on this podcast is just buying stock and ETF. So if you want to invest in commodities, you can certainly do that by investing in companies that are you know, involved in the commodity. So you can invest in you know, a gold mining company that mines gold or you know, a coffee uh, producing company that you know, produces coffee. So that's one way of investing in commodities. And then there are ETFs for specific uh, commodities as well. So if you want to invest in gold and not actually buy and store any gold coins, you can buy ETFs that sort of uh, align themselves with the price uh, of gold. So those are the ways that we as day traders are going to be actually trading commodities. So we're not going to buy and sell and store any of this stuff. Uh, and this is one realization that I sort of uh, finally realize is, you know, these you know, there are ways to, you know, buy and store um, these metals and things of that, that nature. But big, big companies are doing that. I'm not going to do that. But we can certainly use futures contracts, options, uh, and then ETF. So we'll, we will be talking about those um, in future episodes. So let's just go over some key insights from this. Again, this is a very beginner sort of friendly approach to commodities. So again, commodities, they are basic interchangeable goods used in commerce like wheat, gold, oil. Uh, they're the building blocks of the economy, similar to Lego bricks in commerce. Uniformity and interchangeability. So commodities are uniform across producers and interchangeable with others of the same type. So that's how these are actually traded. Uh, they need to be uh, interchangeable. Uh, real life examples, we talked about you know wheat, gold, oil, financial products, uh, commodity trading. So comparable to sort of global swapping of things uh, involves buying and sell selling raw materials like metals, energy, livestock, meat. And again, we're not going to do that. Uh, we are going to trade commodities uh, using uh, contracts, uh, ETFs, actually buying stock and some options. We're not going to actually uh, take ownership of any physical material. Um, accessibility. So previously, you know, it was dominated by professionals. Uh, commodity trading again now is accessible to people like you and me uh, through some of the things we just uh, mentioned. Uh, we categorize commodities. So you've got you know metals, which are the hard commodities, uh, energy. So these are things like oil and gas and things of that nature, and then soft commodities or agricultural things like uh, corn, soybeans, coffee, and things of that. Uh, nature. So I think that is a good rundown of what commodities are. Again, in the show notes, you can find links to um, the article that has an extensive list of commodities. Uh, and then you can find um, the social links to other platforms that we are sharing this journey on where we are becoming a day trader. So for commodities, we've got a good understanding now. In the future episodes, uh, we're going to talk about actually trading them with futures uh, and options and more sort of basic stock market review. So I hope that you found this useful. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, and then again, in the show notes, you can find the other platforms that we're on where I'm sharing my journey from going from scratch, pure beginner to a full time day trader. So thanks so much for listening. And I look forward to talking with you in the next episode.